Okay, here we are looking at an aerial image of uh, the property that we purchased. Um, we got a property in the middle here. There's agriculture all the way, all the way around. Um, some of it is close enough for deer to travel to regularly and some of it is not. Um, I'll go ahead and show you the piece that we purchased, which is uh, this plot here um, with proximity to the south and east food. Um, not so much on the north and west sides. Um, here's a half mile range from the center of our property, which encompasses a little bit of food on the south and east, uh, mostly bedding though, uh, no residences to speak of other than a couple of random ones. Uh, once we pop on out to a one mile range, we start to pick up all of this agriculture, which is planted in corn yearly. Uh, on occasion, they will substitute corn for soybeans, but it's mostly corn. Um, and this is within the range of a whitetail to travel and get food here. So all of these deer here become primary deer that we can focus on coming across our property to get to this agriculture. Um, if we step on out another mile and a half, this range here we will get wandering deer from here, but diminishing returns once you reach out this far. Uh, they have easier access to food going the other direction. Um, really the only time that I believe they will cross over into our property is during a rut. If they're out searching for does, they may wander this far. And the same with this two mile range. It's not going to affect us much. Um, there's a lot of ag out here, but uh, not any that's really reachable by the deer that we're focusing on. Um, so let's go ahead and take away the two mile range and the one and a half mile range and focus on this area here, which is a one mile range. So as I zoom in, I uh, get a better picture of uh, some residences on the north side. Um, a couple additional ones here with some old mining ground that's visible and more residents and more agriculture in this half to one mile circle here um, which is well within range of a white tail um, if we have them bedded within our half mile core area uh, for them to move out and feed at nights so as we take away the one mile range go ahead and zoom into our half mile core area um, we've got 40 acres right in the middle of it with a four acre pine stand. Now this is a mature pine stand that doesn't offer much in the form of food or daily browse for the deer. So when we purchased the property less than a year ago, this was hardly utilized. Um, there were a few beds in here when we got a heavy snow. Uh, seems as though they just come in here for shelter. But once the snow was melted and uh, conditions were more favorable, the bedding in other places these deer departed and uh, this once again became you know unusable um, there was some bedding that occurred on the back 20 acres of the property uh, same thing here it's a uh, property that was recently cleared um, not completely cleared but it was uh, select harvested um, all of the good trees are gone and we're left with some young uh, hardwoods and a lot of what a lot of people would call trace trees, which to a uh, whitetail habitat manager, these trees are not really trace. There's a lot of red maple, some box elders. I saw some elms in here. I saw some hickories and a couple of cherries left in here. Um, and a couple of sugar gums also, but you know, no real good uh, timber trees with timber value, but trees that will provide Good deer habitat in years to come. Uh, so this is the property. I'm going to zoom in a little further uh, so that we can start talking about the plan that we did developed here. Um, right here in the middle is the four acre plot that we talked about. Uh, hardly used except for during harsh months of the winter. Uh, so we're going to build this property which what, what I consider a little bit backwards but Given what we have, I think it's our best solution. Uh, typically, 
I would put food on this side of the property, bedding on this side, and then travel in here to catch them coming from the bedding to the food and out to the agriculture. Uh, which is often the distance, you know, taking advantage of the predominant winds that travel from the west. Um, but this is not set up that way. Um, I could put food here, but that would leave nowhere left for bedding because they're not going to bed in these pine trees uh, on a regular basis. There's just not enough food here for them. And it's also uh, pretty wide open underneath the trees with not much ground cover, you know, what a deer enjoys. Um, so we're going to build it a little backwards. We're going to end up putting the food plot out in the middle of the pines, which will be situated here uh, and allow for doe bedding all the way around, um, hopefully. And then uh, we may be able to get bucks to bed back here. Um, that looks like uh, this is what it looks like um, once we incorporate the bedding areas. Uh, doe up here and uh, doe and bucks back here. Primarily would like to use the duck bucks back here so that we can get movement out to visit with the doe and to get us some food and then they can take advantage of some routes that we'll place uh, to circle them around and back out to the agriculture which is south and east and of uh, our property. Um, but like I said this is an idea we'd rather have it in the reverse order but this pine stand prohibits us from doing that at this moment. Uh, in the future, many years down the road, we may go ahead and put food here so they can take advantage of this agricultural movement. And uh, But that would require us to pretty much wipe out this entire pine stand, or at least 75 to 80% of it, and then allow natural regrowth to occur, which could take four to six years to get it established to where this could become a primary bedding area and get the movement in that direction. So that is a possibility in the future, but right now uh, we're gonna give this plan a shot for three or four years and see if it'll work. Um, so let me remove these bedding areas and then I will show you the uh, existing logging roads that are on the property. Um, which will enable us to travel back and forth, enable the deer to travel back and forth, uh, which they are already making some use of them. The main problem is there's a ridge system that wraps all the way around here and back through here. And this logging road is following the toe of the ridge. So what that does is this central movement that we can do takes us up a steep slope right here. Uh, this is cut off and this is cut off from deer movement because of this ridge. So these deer, once we look at the deer routes, are following this path around the ridge onto the neighboring property to get out into these pines or to get across the route. And the same on the south side. They're following this ridge down and around the property onto the neighbors and back out. This is absolutely not what we want for our property. We need to keep them on the confines of our area as much as possible. So what we would like to do is we will take these deer trails that they're naturally using and create these green trails through the ridges and up into the food plot. Now if we take a look at This area and this area are sections of the ridge that we will actually cut out and use that material to build a gradual slope down the ridge, therefore negating the steep terrain that they don't like to use. This will enable all the deer in the back half of the property in the bedding areas that we showed you before to move through our clear cuts, up over the ridge, down through a bottom and out to the plot. If they want, they can circle around the plot, checking does and grabbing something to eat, and then come back out this ridge cut that we made 
and back into the bedding area and out to the agriculture. This is a much better plan to get deer to move within our property from the back of the property out into the food and the bedding and then back out towards the agriculture or vice versa. If they are bedded in here, they can move up into the food, circle around this bottom and back out through this bedding into the agriculture out here. So let me go ahead and remove these deer beds and show you what we have for entry routes. On this ridge that I spoke about that wraps around here, we can make use of that once we establish a feeding pattern and a doe bedding pattern in this area. Our entry routes can stay on the back side of the ridge, taking advantage of southern winds, pushing our scent onto the neighboring property, and using the ridge to block our scent from the swirling, which will also block our sound and our sight as we head into stand locations. And the same on the south side. If we have a predominantly north wind, we can take advantage of this ridge system to disappear behind the ridge, keeping our sight and our sound dampened while we access stands on this side of the property. Now, if we can establish these deer routes from the bedding up into the plot, they will be traveling the center of the property while we are sitting on the edges trying to catch them on the access trails, on the perimeter trails, and back out to the agriculture. So I believe our entry routes will definitely enable us to construct a plan to where we can run deer in a direction that may not be ideal but is manipulatable to the property that we're on. So let me go ahead and uh, delete these entry routes and just primarily focus on the deer route at this time. There are plenty of movement areas for deer in here but that it can bed in between all of these routes, circling out to the doe areas, coming back out to the buck bedding areas. With water on the way, there's another small pond here that they can water at, and then escape back to cover, back to their bedding areas if need be. So once again, this is our uh, deer management plan. Um, as I zoom out, you'll be able to see how it's situated, where deer can come onto the property, travel within the property to get food, and then leave and head back to ag or back to their bedding areas within this half mile core area, and then on out to this one mile core area with little to no pressure within the half mile range. So it's important that you develop the deer flow on the property. We establish food, we establish bedding areas, the entry routes and stand locations are all thought of, accounted for, and incorporated into our access plan into our habitat management plan and into the deer's daily lives, daily routines, and whitetail world.